Hello, welcome back. If you've made it through the first two videos, then you know that we are at part three of this four video series where we talk about being bold in front of strangers. Now we've already talked about being bold and convincing yourself of this idea so that when all else fails, you can pick you up. We've talked about convincing your family, your friends, those people closest to you whose opinions you value the most convincing them and showing them what it's like to be convinced so that you have a greater support, a greater belief in yourself. Because you say, hey, if somebody else believes in me, then I can keep believing in me too. Now, part three, it's being bold in front of strangers. Yourself your opinion you already know. Your loved ones and family, your opinions you value. But strangers, their opinions you fear. And I fully understand that. I don't go walking around in this hat every day of the week, partly because I don't want it to get grubby because I work a full-time job doing, doing maintenance and it would get, oh, this is a nice hat, I don't want it hurt. But going out in public with a hat like this it's a very different matter than just sitting in front of my computer and doing it why because even i fear from time to time that people are gonna think i look silly here's the wonderful wonderful news about the opinions of strangers most of the time they're not gonna say anything it's like my wife and I, we'll watch people going along the bike path outside of our house and uh, personal opinion, take it for an opinion, not a fact. Uh, we think that leggings as pants is not the best fashion look for most people. Some ladies pull it off pretty well, but for the majority of people, it's like, that's, that's, that, that's, that's not modest, that's not even attractive. Guess what, how many people know that we say that we think those things. Well, now the entire internet, granted. But how many people of the ones who walk along the who walk along the street? None. How many people do I look at and I say, who they should stop smoking? A lot. How many people do I actually say that to? None. And it has nothing to do with being afraid of their response. It has everything to do with it's not my business. Now that can be a bad thing. The tragedy of the commons is a horrible thing and you should look it up yourself. This idea that everybody should say nothing because somebody obviously has said something and nobody else is gonna say, whatever. But for the most part, people are gonna look at you weird, if at all, and then shrug. And you know, say that your hat looks stupid to their friends, or, oh, her leggings just didn't look any good, or, wow, they should not put on that much makeup. But guess how many people are actually going to say it to you? Very few. The ones who do are actually a little bit more concerned with being kibitzy than with being helpful, and uh, you don't need to be kibitzed. So, what am I talking about with be bold in front of strangers? Well, consider street performing or busking as the term is, where you stand out on the street corner and you just play your guitar. People walk by you all the time. Some of them care. Some of them toss a dime. Most just keep walking. And everybody's got an opinion and almost nobody shares it. There's this terrible story about uh, world-famous, world-class violinist Joshua Bell playing the violin in the subway during like the entire morning. Now this is a guy who plays for millions of people and he plays some of the most technically difficult pieces in the world. And yeah, the experiment was all, the, the uh, whole gimmick of the thing was how so many people don't appear to have 
time for classical music or cl time for the good art things in life. Sure, you can get that. But if you consider it, everybody noticed. Nobody said anything. And how much courage would it take to get up on a street corner, pull out your small pipes, and play? Or go to the public park, go to, I don't know, your front yard or public park and do Tai Chi by yourself. Or take along a wooden sword and practice your kendo. How many people are going to look at you weird? A lot. How many people are going to say anything? A few. But here's going to be an interesting thing that you'll start to notice. Someday, somebody is going to see you and they're going to say, you know what? If they're brave enough to do it, I am too. If they're brave enough to go out there and Go for it. I am too. Suddenly you've become somebody's hero. This is what happens when we end up putting our stuff out there. When you put a video on YouTube, when you put a blog post on the internet, when you put an art piece up for sale on Etsy, when you submit your book to a publication company. You are putting it out there. And somebody is going to like it, and somebody is not going to like it. And you have to keep putting it out. So this is the third step. It's built on the other two. You believe in yourself first, and then you convince those closest to you to believe in you and to support you. Because you're taking your stuff out to the world now. You're playing your bagpipes on the street corner, and when you get home, you've got to say to yourself, I'm going to do that tomorrow, or I'm not going to do it again. And I'm going to tell you what the, two different, what, what, what the two different lives look like. The person who says, I'm going to do that again tomorrow, is the one who keeps pushing, and keeps submitting their book, and keeps going through all the rejection letters, keeps facing rejection after rejection after rejection, and finally, Stephen King sells a book. And the second person is the person I've already been, who went nowhere, who did nothing. It was terrifying being that person. And I decided I'm not going to be him again. So that's the third group of people that you have to be bold for. Complete strangers. People whose opinions you don't value, but you fear. You can do it, though, because once you've gotten to that, once you are bold enough to stand up there, you are big enough to inspire somebody. This is Chris Schallard, Idea Engine, encouraging you to take something old, make something new. Peace out.